Oh, it's Thursday already. Yes, let's go. Two days from game day because the Browns play on Saturday, and it looks like they're going to get Anthony Brown at quarterback. I thought it was Tyler Hunt for the Ravens. I don't know. I heard a report this morning that it, it appears that Anthony Brown is going to be oh. the starting quarterback. Unless that's right. changed. Since I thought I heard that Tyler heard Huntley had practiced yesterday, so I assumed he was going to play, but maybe not. I'm pretty sure that it's a given now that it will not be Lamar it's Jackson. not Lamar. Definitely. No, it's not. Um, no. So, I, I think they're being pretty coy about this. But I read, yeah, I read something early this morning that said they, it looks like Anthony Brown might get the nod. I don't know if they've definitively made that decision or not, but we'll see. Welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Busy day today. Cavs win last night. I'm going to ask you guys if this was their most impressive win of the season. I know they had two nice wins against the Celtics, but considering where they were and what they looked like when we saw them in San Antonio compared to the team we saw last night, yeah. it's, a, it's at least worth the discussion. Maurice Claret's going to be here. We're playing no fence riders. That's where we definitively make a bold statement about Saturday's game between the Browns and the Raiders. And Aditi will be here to talk about. Do we know, is Aditi doing the Browns-Ravens game? I meant to ask her that when she was on earlier this week. I do not believe so, but no? we'll get confirmation when she joins us at about noon. Yeah, that would have been a good game to see her on just because of her knowledge of both, both sides. Um, but we're going to start with, uh, with Cleveland Browns talk and a hot debate that we scratched the surface of yesterday. But before we do, uh, McNuggets has some business to take care of. A Browns talk sponsor. We do. Browns Big talk news. is now brought to you by Cuyahoga Community College. Tri-C supports their students financially, professionally, and personally while also opening up the doors of endless possibilities. Tri-C, where the future starts and it starts right now. Classes begin January 17th, 2023. Try see. We appreciate you guys. And also, we want to mention, we're doing an Ultimate Sports Show giveaway where you get some really cool signed memorabilia from some former Cleveland Browns. Let's take tag board, uh, tag board full here, Steve. Leroy Horde, Dequell Jackson, Tim Couch, signed mini helmets and footballs signed by those three. You can find the... Link to enter that contest on our YouTube page. It's wkyc.com slash contest. You have to subscribe to be entered. So do that and win some really cool memorabilia to give out during the holiday season. Very nice. Now, are, are each helmet signed by all three or are they signed individually? individually? You get one helmet per. I got it. Cool. Oh, wow. Very nice. So three helmets, three mini footballs in this prize. And, and let's welcome Tri-C to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show family. Let's a round of applause. What's up, Tri-C? Thrilled to have Tri-C Tri in the roster. My wife worked Very for Tri-C for, for a number of years. It's a great uh, university, whatever. It's not a university, college. but it's Secondary education. Yeah, it's, it's, <coughs> it's great that they give people that can't afford to go to a four-year school, yes. an opportunity to get two years of legitimate college with great professors. They have a particularly good nursing program there. I know that they're really good. And they have sports teams, too. So they I do. I started a community college. I did two years. Did I, you really? Yeah. yeah. That's where I started. Saved thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It it's is great. a very smart yes. route. It is. And it, particularly now, Bernie Kosar is doing some work with sort of alternative education corporations. Um, tech schools mm. are now a very wise choice. Yeah, sure. Get a trade and be set for life. Go into these community college systems, which sets you up Absolutely. for if you want to go the four-year university route, right. why spend four years of exorbitant fees when you can get by much cheaper for two years at a place like Tri-C? Yeah. Transfer those credits because all they the, do. That's them, right. And then finish the bag. At, exactly I mean, Ohio I State costs you a fortune. Guys, I am <laughs> stunned. St absolutely stunned at the cost of education. That's right crazy. Now. It's 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 huh. unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna have to. I don't know what the answer is. They're gonna have to do something. It's getting out of control. I can't remember it's the absurd. School. It's a the, no, it's the a school, school I went to, by the way. Yeah, not to cut you off. Emerson, right? Yeah, Emerson College. Very expensive college. And I had a I had a basketball scholarship, so right. Got a little help. If it was if it cost what it costs now in twenty. 11 when Do you I know college. what it costs now? Yeah, it's stupid. Is it like in the seventy-five to eighty thousand yeah, exactly dollars range? Yeah, exactly in that range. Because most of your northeast really exclusive schools, you're not snipping them for under seventy-five thousand. It's, it's, it's unaffordable now. It's a racket. I don't. It, I can't understand. It, it ain't even close. It's a racket. So basically, they tell you because you got to go to school. I had to do it. Now you got to do it at a more inflated cost. Yeah. And. If you check the wages, if you check the salaries, if you check the benefits, of they're not going working, up. They're not going up like the cost no. of colleges. No, they're, actu close. they're actually going down and being minimized. And most of the jobs are no longer here or they're, they're pipe dreams. So you got to go to five. And if you're I, I talked to some doctors, my friends are anesthesiologists, right? He's supposed to be making all the money. 
He said, man, you know how much I'm, I'm coming out just for the room, just for insurance my, my insurance. For anesthesiologists uh, are co- incredible. Consultations or even if I'm doing different visits or any visits that I'm doing before, I'm paying for all of that stuff. And I got six years, seven years of college. And, and, and I'm debt. Paying, and debt. And I'm paying for my wife too. So they're like, I'm not rich. He, I, he's like, thank God for American Express. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you're living on plastic. Yeah. All right, um, so thanks again to Tri-C for joining the family. We're looking forward to them being a uh, productive sponsor. We hope the relationship is mutually beneficial to them as it is to us. Let's talk um, Cavs. This was something that we sort of, like, I, I think we stumbled upon it yesterday, and I, I wish... Browns, you mean? Uh, Browns, what yeah, I say, yeah. Cavs. Cavs I, yeah. I, I wish Tyvis was here because... Tyvis is the one that threw this grenade into the into our text no, chain yesterday. No, it was G. Bush. It was you. I, I threw it. It didn't. And left. then Tyvis was the and first. Tyvis, right. Tyvis, he, okay. He landed yeah. on so the go mortar. ahead and say what your text was to the group. I just threw it out there. I said, you know, is three years enough time to evaluate a head coach? And let's just boil down that statement alone. Let's not get into the semantics of Kevin Stefanski's three-year situation. Yeah, right. just three Let's years just talk about, in general, guys, do you yeah. think three years is enough? Uh, guys, I think, I don't think three years, I don't think any time is enough for outsiders to really evaluate the job a coach does. I think three years is enough for guys in the building, like, in theory, you know, Jimmy Haslam or a team owner or a team general manager or the CEO of the team. Like, I think three years is enough for those guys because though the, they know the inner workings. Right. We on the outside, we we're just know. making our best guess based on parts of knowledge. We may have a contact on the team. We watch the team. We have some insight. Jason goes to the games, is able to talk to players and coaches. We have some level of information, more than the average fan, Jason and the people that are in the locker room, more than the rest of us. I know G has some connections with some of the players. But you would believe then that the owner is equipped to make a a judgment after three years. I think so, yeah. I think it's too complicated a question to give a yes or no answer because is three years enough to evaluate Ron Rivera or Mike McCarthy, who've been doing it for 15 years? Right. Is it enough to evaluate Kevin Stefanski, who's only been doing it three years? These guys make mistakes. And especially early on, especially first-time coaches, and they have to learn from their mistakes, and they do, and they get better. Theoretically, they get better the longer that they're in the role, and they realize first year, probably should have done that. Second year, probably should have staggered the practices that way, something as simple as that. Right. GMs especially, I know we're talking coaches, but GMs make mistakes in the draft, especially their first time doing it. And theoretically, they get better as it goes, and progress I remember talking to Dan Gilbert about this after the Cavs won the championship. Progress isn't always like this. Progress a lot of times is is like this. And you you think, okay, you're going to learn. You're going to be better in year two than you were year one. You'll be better in year three than you are year two. Sure, theoretically that sounds right. It just doesn't always work out that way. So if we're playing no fence rider, you would say, yes, three years is enough. Jason, it sounds like you're a no. I'm a no. Yeah. G. Bush, you asked the question. Is three years enough? I really wasn't even trying to be like like divisive. I, I did. I was just wondering. You were asking people, a question. Um, because I flip flop between them. Like I could see, you know, if you look at the guys who have been with Kevin Stefanski in his class, you look at it. Two of them already gone, right? Uh, I think Joe Rule, Judge and Matt Rule both fired. Yeah, and, and they was trying to go after Rule last year. Right. Like so, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. What's the correlation? What do you? Is it wins? Is it a feel? Is it how he handles the press conference? It's everything. It's a lot of things yeah. that go into it. But I would, I would, if 55, 45 say yes. So no fence rider, you saying yes. Yeah, yes, three years now. Is enough. It, it is enough uh, if you're really paying attention. Which means he's got four more games for you to make up your mind. Yes. Well, let me, and let me clarify my answer a little bit too, because... I tried to put you in a box, too, yes, on that. I mean, yes. I understand that there's nuance to that answer, right. and, and, but I'm and, trying to just get a definitive, yes. is it or not, in and general. And my definitive answer would be yes. However, here's, <laughs> and I've said this before, here's how I feel about coaches. I think there's, don't get caught up in the exact number, but there's a few coaches, three or four, maybe five, maybe some years, two, whatever. I think there's a few coaches that are great, and I think there's a few coaches that clearly suck, yeah. And then I think there's 20 some odd coaches yeah. that are somewhere in the middle, depending on their talent, depending on their experience, depending on all this, that may, as Jason says, may get better. I think after three years, if you, I think you might know if a guy's in that crap category and if he's in that crap category, then I'm, Get, then I'm then he's gone. Punt. Oh, right? Yeah, okay. We need one year to know if Freddie was in that category. 
Right. One year. One, yeah. well, in his case, right. one year. two games. I, I don't <laughs> think we needed a year. And 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 maybe there are some cases. I think it's harder to do this that you know somebody's in the elite category after three years. I, I think, think you knew about Sean McVay. I think we yes. knew about John Gruden. I think there are examples that do come right. up. Right. But the guys that are in that middle twenty, and and I think right now I would say Kevin is in that middle twenty, which right. is the majority of coaches. I think with those guys, if you if you feel like okay, he's in this group, and I think he can keep trending up, then I stick with him. Yeah. And that's what I think they're going to do. But I do think the last four games could play a role for him I, specifically. I, I think your nuanced answer is very good. I no, think it. No. I think it kind of is in line with what I'm thinking in this particular. I know. I know. I said in general is three years enough. Yeah. And I would say in general, if we're going to speak in general terms, it is not. And the reason is for what you said, Jason. There are so many outside factors as to what goes on, particularly when you're talking about a first-time head coach. You can think you're good at clock management, but until you're doing it and real bullets are firing, anybody that's done a difficult job for the first time that watched it for a long time and thought, I'm ready, and and I would equate that to me being a live television sportscaster. I watched it a Mm -hmm. lot before I actually did it, and I thought, I'm ready. But once you sit in the chair and you've got two voices in your ear constantly changing the roadmap and stories are dying and time is a, you know has something to do with it. We're killing this story. Yeah. You got 30 extra seconds stretch. You think you're ready for that, but I was a deer in headlights for, for a number of years. I don't know what at what point I turn and all of us probably can relate to that. Jason, when it came to hitting deadline. You had done it. Oh, yeah, it, that, when it's for oh. real. The night of the Ohio State Miami National Championship game, the double overtime game, I had like 17 <laughs> versions of the story on my screen. It was like, what am I doing? Right. Oh, yeah. But now, yeah. if you were in that situation through experience, you understand how to boil that down to two or three. Sure. Yep. You understand how to work each one of those as yep. the game is progressing. Yep. And you can hit your deadline a lot sooner. And the same for all of us in what we do. And right, I think right. I, I, I'm afraid that. Now, all of the coaches that Cleveland, not all of them, but the vast majority that they have brought in and then cut bait with have never gone on to do unbelievably great things. There have been Kyle Shanahan's. There have been guys that were in positions that maybe were passed up. I think McDermott was a guy that was passed up. But we haven't brought a coach in and fired him and then watched him go win a Super Bowl. That's, Other than Belichick, which that, was long ago. That's true. However, none of those guys... And, and maybe none of them are any good. I'm not saying they are. I didn't love any of them. But I loved none of them, one. But were any of them Who? given a chance? You're going to laugh. Everybody, everybody, when you ask this question, because I yeah. always ask this question, yeah. the question when you say, well, who was so great that they let go yeah. that got a bad rap? I think everybody says Mike Patton. And because Mike Patton That's got, not mine. got Johnny Manziel forced on him, he did have a 7-4 and four record. He did have Hoyer. But they brought back, they had Manziel, they forced him to play him, and then he had, uh, oh boy, with a Josh Gordon, and then a Shanahan at coordinator, that fell apart. And so it was kind of like, well, I could kind of see where people would say, that wasn't his fault. Who'd Who'd you like? Eric Mangini. Mm, He wasn't bad. Now, I think the reason I'll say Eric. He didn't have a lot of talent to work with at all. No, he did not. And I thought he overachieved. I think with Eric, because I got to know him so well, working closely with him after the experience at ESPN and watching his knowledge, and I've worked with a lot of former coaches, and they all impressed me, but none of them, none of them impressed me in terms of acumen, the way he sees the game, more than Eric Mangini. I think Eric got caught up in the idea of trying to be Bill Belichick. All, all those guys did. They all did. And if you look yeah. at if Belichick's assistants that have gone on, it's head scratching. Yeah. Why his tree hasn't had far more success, yeah. but they have not. Yeah. And that's a testament to Bill and how good he is. People that have worked with both have told me the person of all of those people that have come through, and there have been dozens. Eric Mangini was the one closest to Bill in acumen, in IQ. I think Eric got labeled as a guy that couldn't get it done because of his time here. I would love to see Eric get another chance. And I don't know that I haven't talked to him about this specifically recently, but I just think that Eric can do it. And I think he could be a very, very, very good head coach. And I think his career got derailed by his time here. Toxic soil killed another. I, absolutely could I, be the case. I, I think one thing that, that has hampered all of them is people skills. Like, 
there, there's a certain part where and he, he la I think he lacked in that with the players. If you if you go listen to him and you listen to Pat Shermer, I think Pat Shermer is a, is a very bright button up football guy, but I they don't all are they all it, yeah, right? to, like to reach to that level. They all yeah, are sure. and they're putting in crazy hours. <laughs> but if, here's the thing. Even when people laugh about Freddie Kitchens, I always yep. go back and tell them Freddie Kitchens got the most out of Odell Beckham Jr. He had a thousand. Yeah, Jarvis Landry had a thousand. He had a thousand yard running back too. Like it wasn't like he was completely garbage, yeah. but that just goes to show you the difference between the top and the mid tier levels. That's right. Now, I, I think it also goes to philosophy, like Bull says. Do you believe that if there is a bunch of coaches in the middle area, right? Do you believe that a mid tier coach with a good roster can win the Super Bowl? Yes, I, I think, think absolutely. So. It's happened. We've seen it. So if, if that's what you believe, then you you have less of an emphasis on saying I need to get rid of the coach. Be, but if you believe I got a you got to have a franchise quarterback and a top tier coach, then sometimes people get but I think, I think you got to have one or though. the other. I think it's an outlier when you do it. I, the, the guy that I would bring up is, is Doug Peterson. I don't think Brian Billick was in a, it was especially a great head coach. He had an all-time great defense. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if you start rattling off the Super Bowl champions and you look at the last 20, which are what I would really consider the modern era, they're, for the most part, won by coaches that you would call great. But yeah. are we calling them great because they won the Super no. Bowl? No, I think we're calling them great because they're body of work. And, and like, so, right. so for six of them, yeah. we, look at, we look at the guru, the, the GOAT, the best to ever do it, in yeah. my mind anyhow. And he's no doubt great, but others that have won in that era, for the most part, are guys that most would consider to be not just one-hit wonders. I think Peterson and Billick were one-hit wonders. But you outside of that, to the last twenty, real quick. Sure, just for fun. Go ahead. McVay last year. I think he's a great head okay. coach. I, I do. agree. He's elite. Bruce Arians. But you know what? I don't think Bruce Arians is a great head coach. But like, well, he I had don't an think the Rams, great quarterback. I, I. I Sean uh, McVay is obviously a better coach than Zach Taylor, right? But I don't think the Rams won the Super Bowl because he could Sean McVay outcoached Zach Taylor. I just think oh. they won the Super Bowl because the Bengals offensive line wasn't ultimately wasn't good enough. I'm just so, saying, let's, let's go through the 20. Let's just see yeah, how yeah. many are, are true. Do we, we, I, would, I don't know I, that we would put Arians in Arians the, is not. In the no, great I would category. Not. I would not. He was Definitely great not. at what he did. He I thought was, he was a I great think, I offensive great coordinator. Line. I thought he was a great and he coordinator. Had, and, by the way, he had an all-time great quarterback. got to have one When you look at, at Peterson and Billick, they did it with Trent Dilfer yeah. and, and Nick Foles. Nick Foles, That's for crazy. crying out loud. Well, Tre and the Ravens, it was a different, the All score was different then. Yeah. And that was the, you know, outside of the 85 Bears, probably the best defense right. ever. Okay. Andy Reid. Yes. Oh, yeah, great no coach. Question. Belichick, great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Doug Peterson. No. 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 Belichick. Yes. Yeah. Gary Kubiak. No. 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 And that was with Peyton Manning. Yes, it was. That, Although, yeah. in fairness, All Peyton time Peyton, Peyton was wasn't that great at that point. And didn't and, and they didn't win the Super Bowl necessarily, in my view, because of him. Right. He defense. was he, he was, was still pretty defense. good. He, he was good. Uh, but he I, wasn't elite Peyton Manning. Right. But but yeah. again, so the, the the two that we've gotten to so far outside of Peterson, yeah. in Arians and Kubiak Crazy did it with Brady and uh, guys that are arguably top two or three quarterbacks. Yeah, Hall of Fame quarterbacks. So they yes. can overcome some coaching deficiencies. Who else? Yes. Pete Carroll. I think Pete is. I don't. I don't put him in the great. I put him in, you know, very good. He's made Pete, some all-time bonehead decisions. If he if he hands the ball off, he's one of the greats. He's an all-time great college coach. I don't think he's an all-time. I great. don't. You know what's so interesting either. to me about that? The reason I would say he is a great head coach, if I made a list of guys that I consider to be great head coaches, even though he's made some of the most colossal bonehead decisions of all time, because it's not just if he hands the ball off. If he has his Heisman Trophy winning Reggie Bush in the game instead of Lendale White. Boy. They pick up the first down, and and Vince Young never gets to yeah. pull one of the all-time great comebacks, yeah. so he's got another national championship. I think, this, I think if you've won a college national championship yeah. and a Super Bowl, You're elite. Jimmy I'll Johnson, elite. I'll give you that. Great. I, 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 um, I think when you look at Pete Carroll, we'll see how it ends up this year, but this year has made him look better. It has. His yeah. team right. – has was supposed to be trash and they've been good. Now they've been falling apart lately right. and could miss the playoffs. And Russell Wilson, who everybody thought was great, Tank. has been crap without him. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, who else? A couple more here. That was Pete Carroll. We have John Harbaugh with Baltimore. I yes, do. I, 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 I consider him elite. Yeah, Tom yeah. Coughlin. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
I, I don't. I, I think he's I the, do. To me, he's a level two with Pete Carroll. He's won multiple Super Bowls, right? Yeah. Like, and, and yes, and, that's why I put him in the great category. And he was that a list good, is very he's small. Right on that he's street, a good street. college. He was I a think good, good college Carroll. coach, and he had success in Jacksonville. I think he's the second level with Pete Carroll for me. Okay, he's, he's fringy, elite, but certainly the, better than Belichick we're, we're and Peters. Here, I, I think we are splitting hairs. Yeah, you got to think about it. If you say the New York Giants, I don't. That doesn't pop off as the greatest talented team ever. Like, oh wow, Giants were a juggernaut. Like, no, they were. Super but Bowl, but by, by the way, way they had they a Hall Belichick. of Fame quarterback for both of their Super Bowl. And they, and they beat the 19 year old team. He has to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he's, I, I, he's, I would yeah. say if I had to go fence right around Coughlin, I would put him in. Yeah. Who else? By the way, this is controversial, but I would not vote for Eli Manning for the Hall of Fame. I know he's getting hit, but I'm not going to get to that. That is controversial. We'll do that over time. We'll do that in an off season. (laughs) On a a boring day in the off season. I will fight that hill. Well, me and Joel Box. Even though I like like Eli a lot, but I do. I'll I'll literally get out the box. That's your favorite player of all time. My favorite athlete. I would die for you. From that era. From yeah. that era, there's a lot of middlings like Philip Rivers. Don't put Eli in that category. Guys that I'll that fight you too. Eli's Eli's not any better than Philip Rivers. He was also he also mind. won two MVPs. He was the MVP of both Super Bowls, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. If, so if, if I, it wasn't just, for the miracle David Tyree catch, is he all a famer? No, but you know what? Think about what happened on the front end of that play. Eli should have been Escapability. sacked. He should have been. He also put that in the only place that Tyree could catch it. While getting hit, it was part. He, that was exactly how they do that play oh, up. There was no luck he in played that. The no. That's how they drew it up. <laughs> he played the greatest game of his life, dog. I, I that, never... that drive was incredible. You know what's amazing? Bes- I, I know this is a little silly to say, but besides those two Super Bowls, I'm pretty sure Eli Manning never won a playoff game. That is a fact. That yep. is true. That he is won wild. all of his playoff games in their two Super Bowl runs. <laughs> yeah. Also, his throw to Manningham on the sideline in the second Super Bowl yes. oh was God. actually a better play than the helmet catch. That's true. Yeah, probably. We'll, we'll have a whole. I'll fight Bull and G two on one on an Eli Manning. <laughs> I debate. think you fight he's, me and G two on one. He's borderline. You, he's you know, borderline. You're, I mean, but you are going to lose <coughs> that debate because Eli. Well, is he's all going to the Hall of Fame. I acknowledge that. Okay. We got some other coaches. Okay. Keep going. Mike McCarthy with Green Bay. No. Well, he did it with it again. He did it with an all-time great quarterback. So yes. all of these coaches that we're saying no about, with the exception of Billick and Peterson, yeah. did it with all-time great quarterbacks. So you yes. got it. So, so you so better have an all-time, all-time great, great quarterback, quarterback or, all-time or a great coach, coach that's either elite or borderline elite. There's only three. Yeah, more. You got to have one of the other. Let's go three more. Let's run through the last three here real quick. Sean Payton. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't both. think so. Yeah, that's both. the point I was making earlier. He had a Hall of Fame quarterback. Do we know he's a good coach or did he have a Hall of Fame quarterback? Well, we quarterback? may find out that's because exactly he's going to coach again. So we will ago. find out yeah. if he's – if. But, but yeah. again, yes. top five quarterback yes. again, of all time. Again, to me, he's Pete Carroll and Coffin. But here's why – Okay, and that's fair. Yeah. I can yeah. see that. Here's why I will call now, him. certainly not a bad coach, but, no. you know. He, the, the way – He's going to be sought after when he comes the, out the, on the market officially. There was about four years the way he was scheming stuff up where nobody wasn't – Nobody wasn't getting five, ten quarterbacks, putting them in five wide, and because you got to think, Drew Brees coming out of college was was a five, he was they was throwing the ball all over Purdue. Didn't he start the second half of his Super Bowl win with an onside kick? He did. He sure did. Yeah. I, 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 that might be one of the ballsiest, smartest calls I've ever. See, I, and I don't well, know. It doesn't work that everybody's calling him an and idiot. Plus, they just but had. it did work, and it worked, <laughs> and he knew it was going to work because he had seen that they were already turning before the ball yeah. was on the kicker's foot. Yeah, because who expects that? Right? Nobody. That crazy. Right. But he took advantage of yeah, that, yeah. and that's what great coaches do. I, I, I have him in there. my great cop. He's, he's, he's great. great. Who else? Last, uh, then we have Coughlin's first one when they knocked off right. the undefeated yeah. Patriots. Yeah. Tony Dungy, yep. all time yeah. great. Yep. All time great. And he did it by the way with a an all time great defense. But a Brad Johnson mediocre kind of Trent yeah, Dilfer yeah. ask quarterback. And then I don't know who they really well they had. Did they have Bob Sanders that year they went in Indianapolis? They did. They did. Okay. Yeah. They had a decent. Yeah. Team. yeah. And oh yeah. I'm sorry. Time. I said Dungey did it with Johnson. Yeah. With Brad yeah. Johnson. I'm thinking of Gruden in in, in right, Tampa right. Bay. Yeah. So this is, so yeah. Gruden he won. did it with with Peyton Manning. Yeah. 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 Of course. He did with Peyton Manning. Yes. Yeah. But so I think that's great here. coach, great quarterback. Bill Cowher. Yes. Great. No yes. question. Yeah. So I think what we've determined here is that. Well, you forgot about Mike Tomlin. He was the vast majority. Not Tomlin. No, no we, didn't. we didn't mention. You we didn't, didn't mention. Yeah, we skipped over Tomlin. What oh, we, then I skipped over Tomlin. Where do Tomlin we put Tomlin? Tomlin? I don't put him in great. I put I him put again. Pete Carroll. Yeah, I put him, I him in the Carroll with the, in that second level yeah. for me. But, but <laughs> what's interesting is, yeah. and that's why, because he, and, I feel like he and Peyton, like they won, and then everybody said they were great, and then they didn't do much for a long time sure. after that. But, right. See, but but here's the thing, he has one, and uh, old boy got one, right? Uh, Harbaugh got one, right? right. But I, I, I mean, I feel like they're the same. 
Like Harbaugh did it when he had yeah, Harbaugh did it with Joe Flacco. Yeah. I mean, but he had Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Like, that is a cheat code. Like you can't have both of them. So the way you're doing it, if you're yeah. first of all, the vast majority of those were won by coaches. We all agree are elite coaches. Yeah. All then there's the next biggest group, which is probably 30% of those names, are coaches that we would say are really, really good, if not great, but not all-time great or elite. All, all of those, them yeah. did it with one of the following. Hall of Fame top five quarterback or all-time great defenses. Except for the Eagles with Peterson. They didn't have either of those. That's no, crazy. I don't. Th- that, they had a good defense, but it wasn't an all-time great. And by the way, they beat Brady great. and Belichick. Oh. That Eagles team, top to bottom, roster-wise. It was very was solid. It was really good. Loaded. Carson Wentz was in the second year, so they weren't paying a quarterback. Right. And Foles was cheap. Their defensive line, their offensive and line. And Foles, and the thing is. And Foles was magical. Foles, like Flacco, when they won the Super Bowl with Flacco. And Eli. Had, and Eli, but Eli's a much better player yeah. than those guys. But they Thank had but magical Foles runs. Foles and, and Flacco were unbelievable in those postseason runs. They played like Hall of Famers for those I, that month. E- even when I was growing up, even when teams got in, like <laughs> when, 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 t- when the Patriots got in, what was that, 80, 80 when they played Steve 85? Steve Rogan. They, guys, teams like that, they never played above their – like you knew who was going to win. Yeah. <laughs> like you just – Oh, you knew they had no chance you know, the you had elite, Like if a team came in with a terrible quarterback and they was playing like Elway or there was games where, where uh, what is it, the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds – you know they was getting smoked immediately. Foles played like he was a Hall of Famer. He did. But again, you're talking about like outliers. Yeah, you're That's trying. You're, you're betting on magic beans. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the blueprint <laughs> we're talking about is, I think, more standard of. Elite if you're looking coach for the easiest path to a Super Bowl, and isn't that what every team is doing? Mm-hmm. The easiest path to a Super Bowl is to have an all-time great head coach. See, I disagree with that, even though I think that's the second most important you thing. You want an all-time great quarterback. I think that's more important. I'm with both. I'm, I'm with quarterback. You're taking yeah, the quarterback. I'll take the quarterback. But I gave Belichick you guys... is proving it. What have the Patriots done since Tom Brady left? He's a 500 coach. Boston Radio is talking about firing him. I know they, they want they him fired. I heard that, I heard that Monday. I I'm think like, that's crazy. I think crazy. he's actually doing a good job, because I think Mac, personally, I think Mac Jones sucks. So I think he's doing a decent job yeah. having them a game over 500 I right totally, now. But I'm just and saying. And I think, I obviously, title. Brady went to Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl like that. Next yeah. year. So, New so, England And, and, New and England by the way, the, the Buccaneers did not make the playoffs the previous year. That's so, right. So, yeah, I mean, so you, you're, if you have a Brady, and, and I'm not going to say an, a, a, a great quarterback, but Brady is is the guy that changes all the of The entire this. franchise. I mean, he took a team that did, did not make the playoffs. He showed up, and the next year, they're holding the Lombardi trophy. Yeah. So if you the just... Eagles are the only team since the Belichick or the um, the Billick Ravens, which was a general, you know, yeah. a long, how many years Big ago? Big years ago. And it was at the front end of that 20 years ago. Right. So since that team, the Eagles are the only team to win without either a great quarterback or a great coach. Yeah. So, if you so try... don't bank on that because it's it's, 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 like right. the, it's like the Pistons team that won the title. Right. Everyone, exactly. everyone wants yeah. to say, yeah. look, how you can't win, win without them. I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. If you want to bet those magic beans, so once if you every extrapolate it out, do yeah. you think, so right now, if you had to ask, would you say, well, the do Browns, we have the quarterback? The Browns have a, a good quarterback and a good coach? I think they have a great quarterback back and a good coach. Well, that's now right. he's not playing great right now. Well, well, but that's what the point I was going to make is yeah. that's why they went and got Deshaun Watson because they know the exact same things. Jimmy Haslam looked at the quarterback and said, it's not good enough. We have to do better for all the people who love Baker and love what he did here. Ownership looked at that and said, we have to do better at the quarterback position. And that's why they threw a grenade into this organization in March. And that's exactly what it was. It was a grenade that they threw into the organization. And Trapp yeah. was still flying. And, and think about the 49ers, right? They got a great coach. Yeah, they have a great GM. They have had tremendous. They've had excellent Good defense. defenses. Good defense. They've had an excellent I think the offensive most balanced line. Balanced roster in the NFL, with maybe the exception of the Eagles, right, right now. And they've been competitive almost every year, but they except have for not one. had the quarterback. But they have not been able to win ultimately because they didn't have the quarterback. I think that's fair. And they won't. And they probably won't win again this year, as good as they are. Besides him, real quick, while we're talking about coaches. I'm I not should, sure about that, by the way. I sh- I need to like clear. I need to clarify one thing that oh, I yeah. said on Monday. And I just kind of sort of twisted over my words, and I guess this be- someone sent it to me. I guess this became a little bit of a, a thing on Twitter. I said Paul DiBodesta wanted Robert Saleh, and I should have said he liked Robert Saleh, and there's a difference in the two. He did like him. But everyone in the Browns was in full agreement, and I think I said at a different point on Monday's show, they got their top choice in Kevin. Kevin was the top choice of the organization, and he was. I wondered when you said that. I, I, I thought, wait a minute. I, I always thought Stefanski right. was their By guy. By me saying deep Mark, Paul wanted – 
Sale, it became this thing of like, oh, look, they, they, they weren't in agreement. They settled for their, yeah. Yeah, they were in agreement. They did, everybody in the organization <laughs> wanted Kevin, and Kevin was here before Andrew. Like, I still think that's really important to note in terms of is Kevin going to be fired? Everyone talks about that. Nobody talks about AB. <laughs> I'm pretty certain nobody's going anywhere between those three. I agree with you. I don't think anybody's yeah, going uh, anywhere. Paul, either. Andrew, I, I and agree. Kevin are all going to be back next year, barring some catastrophic collapse over this last four games, but I want to make clear, I don't want anyone to think that I was trying to, Paul wanted Kevin. He liked He wasn't Robert. the second choice. The, right, he wasn't the second choice. The only point I was trying to make is Paul's a pretty good identifier of head coaches because he liked Saleh. He did want Sean McDermott and they chose Kevin. So that's why I look at the success McDermott's had in Buffalo, the success uh, Saleh's having now in New York and saying, guys, obviously they are pretty good at identifying this. So when we say it's three years enough, well, it's been three years with an absolute grenade thrown into the into the yeah. franchise in March, which I think changes the parameters. And there, the, I, I talked about all those outside factors that you have to take into consideration. I think this is why three years is absolutely not enough here. Mm -hmm. He's had, correct me if I'm wrong, five starting quarterbacks. He had right? Baker. He had Case Keenum. Wasn't there a game where Keenum couldn't play and we had it was it was the guy yeah, the Raiders, yeah, the Raiders the, game. Yeah, Mullins Mullins. Mullins. Yep. Mullins. Baker. Mm -hmm. And then Keenum closed out the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and this then year Brissette. he's had two. Yeah. So that's five starting quarterbacks right. in fewer than three seasons. The other thing, the reason I don't think we can judge this yet because of the disruption that this organization underwent. You're stopping the experiment short if you don't see this through with a full season with Kevin Stefanski. Because to your point that Deshaun Watson looked at what Stefanski does and said, I can play in that system. I can win in that system. It has been that the injuries, and I know we don't use injuries as an excuse, and I really don't like to use injuries as an excuse, but sometimes you can't ignore that elephant in the room. When you look at the injuries that this team suffered from jump, first of all, they addressed their, their return game gone before the season starts. Yeah, but every team has injuries. I know the that Browns you, don't have more than most. I think you're wrong on that. No, I, I know for a know. fact they're not I, well, in the top five. I mean, this year, at linebacker, if you want to be specific, even Joe Woods yeah, but said I yesterday. Just, I just saw the list of the Is top five. Is there another team that's lost four but they're they're just their happened. linebackers? Their linebackers weren't that good anyway. And well, they, I know, but, well, it doesn't matter. If they're not that good, that but means Jay, the players just, behind them are even worse. I know, but they just lost three of the four in the last two weeks. It wasn't know, like they've been out for the whole year. They lost the linchpin right away. AWOL was gone early in the you, season. But every team has injuries. The Browns don't have more than anybody else. Bull, they don't. I, I know. I don't know that they don't. No, I'm I don't telling know. you. I saw there's a thing as a they're, they're not top five in total. They're not injuries. top five. And if you look at like I don't know where they are. But they're not positions. top five. The Niners are on their third string quarterback. I mean, no, I know. Yeah. So obviously, at quarterback, that's the one that everybody wants to look the at. The Ravens have had that. way more injuries than we the Browns. We didn't use that as an, as an excuse last year, and and you know, so I don't think another team can use that as an excuse this year. I just, it, for me, Jason, am I wrong? It just seems like when you're talking about a fourth string center, that is the the that's the most pivotal position on the offensive line. I would actually he's calling out the signals. I would actually go a different way with it and say, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody dealt with COVID, right? Everybody had dealt right. with COVID. But Kevin was a first-year head coach trying to navigate through COVID and installing his system over Zoom. And then they went through the uh, his second year where basically it was a boycott of OTAs because J.C. Treader led the boycott and they had no off-season program. Right. This was actually his first year of normalcy, but it wasn't really normal because of Deshaun and that grenade that was thrown in. And it sounds like I'm trying to make excuses for him, and maybe I am. But I, I, I have seen enough, especially in year one, when there was nobody else in the building and it was just football. Look what they did. And then yeah, when that's not going to happen again. I know. And that's the part that concerns me. But I've seen, I, I think that there's, now I will acknowledge, and I talked to Zach Jackson about this, my coworker at The Athletic. It, in a lot of areas, it looks like they're regressing. And that is very concerning. Like, it looks like they're worse now than they were in 2020 in, if, in some different areas. If he's, I, I would agree concerning. with that. And that's concerning. Very concerning. If he's going to lean, if he's going to lean on Deshaun Watson, what he's going to have to do is all those teams that we just mentioned there, He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to open it up. He's gonna have to give him a lot of responsibility of saying, "Hey, this is we want. We we're going to lean on what you do." Right now, I think they're trying to be. They're they're they're, uh, they're uh, I, I guess you're, they're a person, a man with no country at this point, because you used to be a, a solid. You used to be heavy run. I don't know if you're gonna be heavy run with Deshaun Watson. You used to be downhill zone running. I don't know if you could be that per person with. Nick Chubb and Deshaun Watson. So this offseason, 
uh, the reason I'm leaning towards giving him another shot is because I really truly believe he's going to have to revamp 75% of the Do you think offense. the offense is having an identity crisis then? Uh, well, Built to go one way, but now forced to pivot? Yes, I, because it looks like it, it, there's no flow, there's no continuity. Do you buy to that, it. Jay? I was it, actually reading the text. I didn't hear. I'm so, <laughs> it, 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 it was a good text from Earl. I'm going to bring it up in a second. His, pre, his premise was we were built to be a run team yeah. and a zone run team, and now that you've pivoted at quarterback, it's clear that – you're going to be something else. Is the, is, is the offense? I don't know. I've heard you guys screaming all year long that they didn't run the ball enough. Now you're telling me they're built to run the ball. Oh, well, Sean well Watson, they are built to run the ball. That's why I was saying they didn't run the ball. When enough. Watson got here, I said, oh, scrap all that. It's like, you, here's the, he's going to be the best. He has to be the best player. Not Nick Chubb no more. Like, that was cool when you had, you know, secondary guys like Brissett or even Baker. But now he has to be your best guy. So, yes, Nick Chubb is a great asset piece and a strong number two. But it's like basketball. That you ain't got a number one. It's a rat. It's got to be a quarterback. It's got yeah. to two hundred thirty million. They're not paying Nick Chubb two hundred thirty million. They are. And and again, I think that's where the suspension threw everything out of whack because I think they were expecting four to six. They could install a different type of offense. Yeah. And then when they went to eleven guys, they just changed kept. The, everything. I think they just kept what Brissett was doing and said we can't install nothing in the last four, five, five, six games. Right. Just run, just run a couple plays here and there, but it's mainly the Brissett playbook. That's why I, I, I really, I'm anxious to see a full season with Kevin Stefanski and Deshaun Watson with no outside distractions. Just bring us an offense yeah. that we think <laughs> yeah. can be a top tier NFL offense, and that's and I why think- I just don't think you can even entertain conversation about moving on from Kevin. I, I wouldn't and I don't think they should. You never know with Jimmy, especially if they crater yeah, in the final four games. Think, we could go on and on for yeah. another hour. I know we got to move on, but real quick, Earl texted me. We were yeah. talking about coaches. What about Chud? And Chud, I think, got a raw deal here. He was I never the too. top choice. <laughs> yeah, and kind of. uh, Chip Kelly was the top choice. They couldn't get Chip. They settled on Chud, and I think the regime in place there wanted to move on from him because they didn't. They, I don't think he got a fair chance, and I think that probably soiled any chance he had in the future. Was it yeah, Chud when they got all them to sixteen hundred with uh, old boy uh, Josh Gordon? Was that the sixteen hundred year? I can't. I remember. don't know. They yeah. all run. They all run together. 